emisije Dušiću za televizionne revolucije Kevin i Olivia na blogu Svijet. The International Phenomena. Attack of the Show. Could it have? No. Um, this is all rhetorical. Kevin. I'm this answering for, the, for you, though. This I'm is for the kids questions. at home. We're going to discuss the lost finale in the loop. Yay! That's what's going to happen. Yeah. Also, Anna Jamie's got some sexting tips in the newest installment of Sex on the Streets. Yeah! And Joshua Gomez from Shock will be here live in studio. Just got more of the goodness about tonight's two hour season finale. Plus, he's going to actually answer questions. You can tweet them, tweet them to at AOTS. Yes. I love and that guy. if you want to know how to actually sext a tip, it's a capital D. You can follow it with some tildes if you want, but it's that easy. Well, why, we just should put you on the streets. Yay! It's time now to run down the top five things on the web. None of which are about the gigantic oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico, which is still going on, by the way. But hey, it's lost! It's <laughs> current. Just go net. The thing. <laughs> I don't have a problem with people discussing Lost at all. I don't have a problem with people watching. I watched the finale. I, right. I followed the Twitters. By the way, I do have a problem with people using sh social networking to say that they're not going to pay attention to social networking for a couple hours. <laughs> like me. Because of spoilers. Totally did you did really that. get it? Yeah. You're one of those A's? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Man, I'm, yeah. Oh, goodbye, Twitter. I'm going, don't but, tweet it. Just ignore it. But you know what happens? If I don't tweet like every four hours, people are like, did you die? What happened to you? Uh, did the, 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 the village really burn down? Did no, the, it didn't. Did the villagers just saying, really get angry? Do babies saying. cry? I'm not crumble. on the show for three days straight. People think I've quit You're or something right. like that. Your mom needs to get off Twitter, Allison. It is, it's just she my needs, mom. No, it's, I, it's, again, it's I, Jackie. I don't have a problem with people watching Lost and loving it at all. I have a problem with ABC News teasing breaking news. Lost reaction. I will really? agree. I Is will that really totally breaking agree news? with that one. Yeah, yeah. like, you but, man on the street, cry into this microphone. Right? I don't care about you. And it was like 20 minutes of their 30-minute segment yeah. was about Lost. That's what bums me out. Yeah, I, I will definitely agree with that. But we will be discussing Lost in the Loop today, so make sure you pay attention <laughs> to that. It's going to be all sorts of Lost. And hey, people, if you, Thanks, haven't, if you haven't watched the finale, we're, can we just do a general spoiler alert? You've for this watched the yeah. finale. I mean, it, if you haven't. Don't blame us if we spoil it for you. It's your yeah, own yeah, fault yeah. for not watching it on time. All right, you yeah. had your warning. All right, done. Now, now, did you know? Getting to around the net, which is, uh, you Finally, guys want some videos, thankfully. some more videos? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. Uh, the brain is actually the largest erogenous zone. I don't know if you know that. Oh God, this is going to be a really weird number five, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be good. It's oh going to be really good. Dai no. Dominica, maka naka naka, pika pika pika. Wait a minute. The old mind F. That, that's a commercial for Fiat. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what the hell is going on over in Europe? I mean, besides the American-style economic collapse. Oh, uh, well, I mean, we're crazy about guns. They're crazy about sex. So, okay. I mean, they get way better commercials from their obsession, but we get to shoot stuff. Yay! So, I mean, yeah. it's a fair trade if you think about it. Shooting stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Oh, did that hurt? No, that was Watch. That was oh, Watch on Podium. Okay. But I was going for the whip crack. Oh. There you go. There you go. Uh, this is fun to do. I just thought that was your knuckles uh, hitting the thing. No, no, I was no, like, I, oh. I'm, I'm a crier, you know. <laughs> All right, today's number four is yet another example of a sin committed by Twilight. Ah, uh, yeah, the books and the movies took everything you loved about scary monsters and then ruined them thoroughly with Mormon theology and abstinence. 
Abstinence. <laughs> and today, you can add Teen Wolf to the long list of Stephanie Meyer victims. Yeah. Yep. Uh, KENS5 in San Antonio has the unfortunate details. It's not emo and it's not goth. It's, well, more animal than that. Meet members of the Wolf Pack, one of several packs scattered about San Antonio's north side. They we're not a gang at all. Like, gangs are posers. They just want attention. Day Kitten Wolf and Lupus is the unofficial leader of the pack at Brandeis High. He says he's got some wolf in him, howling sometimes to get out. I don't believe anyone is just human. It's just everyone's got something else mixed in with them. Day's got his own leash he wears. And then there's the kind his mother keeps him tethered to. Pam Manley says she's proud of her son. They're good kids. Wait, I'm so glad. Could, could Pam stand further away from her yeah. son when complimenting him? I'm really no. proud. Yeah, yeah, he's really, he's, he does his chores. You uh, can hold on to your own leash, honey. Oh, man. I know. I'm sorry. Do they, with a tail. But do, do they not have the cure in San Antonio? I mean, like, no. what? They need Twilight? Really? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got some breaking news for KENS5. Um, when you're done with the emo lemurs, there's a giant shiny story in the Gulf of Mexico. It's right there. Just, You're all about just it. Look. Campaigning for that Gulf. A little bit. A little bit. I like mad. it. I'm I approve. I my approve. My fox tail didn't come in in time, so I have to be emo about oil. Uh, at number three, we have a classic father-son bonding experience. Uh, what? Playing catch? No, no. Making a music video together. A sexy one. You know what I'm talking oh. about. It isn't safe to walk the city streets alone. It is a patient running through me. Let's find the key and turn this engine on. I can feel you breathe. I can feel your heart beat faster. <laughs> Tone deaf and auto tune. Yeah, how did he do his, that? His dad's shirt was like Hubble 3D. You could see the cosmos in there. Like, I was waiting for Carl Sagan to pop out of his pocket. I like it. It was it, nice. He's probably lost in his hair. Oh, yeah, his Elvis, his Elvis wig. Yeah. Um, and it was kind of like the last scene in Field of Dreams, really. Yeah, except with half button shirts and the sound of Eddie Money calling his lawyers. <laughs> you don't want residuals for yeah, that. No, one. I got Okay, that's true. That's nope. true. All right, today's number two item is a wonderful example of backyard pyrotechnics. Yeah, we understand that sometimes you have to burn a lot of brush, right? It happens. You have yeah. the brush burners in here? Yeah. Huh? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, we have to burn some brush. I mean, listen, it's much less eco ecologically responsible than composting it. We agree, True. right? True, yes. But it's, it's way easier than hauling it to the dump. <laughs> and it makes a big boom. Mm, a really big boom. <laughs> Fire Another birdie. Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Oh! Oh my god! <laughs> 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 the dude behind the camera is just laughing his yeah. ass off. Did you see the the, the lawn chairs? Yeah. Place around like, like they were gonna have an audience? Yeah, that was like four hundred dollars <laughs> on break for each chair. If they would have just put oh, people man. in them. Guys, listen, dry brush is already flammable. You don't need to cover it with ten gallons of gasoline. I mean uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Unless you want to be awesome, you do. Okay, that is true. Yeah. That is true. Unless you want the awesome tip. Or you're uh, you're working on a dry land recreation of the BP oil palooza. Look yeah. at you! Mr. Environment today. Working a man. Working a man. <laughs> Uh, oh, by the way, uh, wait, who, where was it on the wall? I saw there. Uh, Mary Whimsical said, every single video thus far today has confused and frightened me. Kudos for that. You're welcome, Mary. Yeah. You're, You're welcome, very Mary. welcome. Um, welcome to Attack of the Show. I know. Still ahead, we're going to answer all your questions about the Lost Finale with today's number one. Yeah. Around the next. Uh, we're not. You know, there's only one way to find out, and it's about sticking around. I was pointing to the graphic on the screen, by the way. Uh, not right there. Guy. This portion of Attack of the Show is brought to you by Blur. Race like a big boy. Rated everyone 10 and up. What, 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 what?
Teen Wolf Leash. Your Teen Wolf Leash. Hey, um, Lost is done. No. It's done. Let it go. Last night, ABC ran a two-hour victory lap and then a two-and-a-half-hour finaleganza. Uh, if that was enough, it was followed by Jimmy Kimmel's farewell to the show, which was basically an hour-long tease to alternate Lost endings that were just extremely lame jokes. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Kimmel. I was Ooh. really ready for those alternate endings. You have to endings. yell curses like a 1940s villain. Like Khan? Yeah. Kimmel! Up to the air. Oh, that's good. You, I scared you for a, a second. Bit. I'm not gonna like, lie. Oh, what are you doing? All right, so take some mite off. All right. Anyway, uh, <laughs> really, really, we went there. We I went know. there. I, we could not go there. Where do yeah, you want to go? Want to go to Walmart? Go let's just go to the wall. Okay. Let's walk around. Let's just go. Get Bye. some pizza and some Walmart. wife beers and some shirts. Okay, I'm coming back. <laughs> All right, so anyway, when Kimmel applied his signature bit unnecessary censorship to Lost Most Memorable Lines, um. Legitimate laughter was produced. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, I'm not going to dance anymore. I'm going to you. I'll bring you some antiseptic later. How about you bring me an ottoman? Well, you added I could use a blow d <laughs> If I him, he's not ever going to be the same again. Do you have any idea how badly I want to you? Yes. You, you want me to s your. I want you to want to. S I f your son's dog. Oh, no! No! <laughs> okay. <laughs> I really don't recall there being that much pedophilia and bestiality in Lost. Oh, I guess you weren't a true fan then. Right. You check out the Lostopedia, it's all... It's all there. Hey, to get your daily viral fix and to check out all the viral videos we have to offer, go to g4tv.com slash around the net. And I'll admit something real quick. What? Uh, it, it's kind of a tangent, and I haven't formed the thought, so Let's apologize go. Tangent, in advance. Tangent, tangent away. Uh, there, for Lost, for true Lost fans, there was around season two, there was Middleos Bioscience. Uh, was a, a little science agency that was Oh, yeah, 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 uh, when announced. they found uh, Juliet. Yeah, and yeah. someone registered middleosbioscience.org because they happened to get a tip that that was going to be one of the company names in the episode early. <laughs> that was me. Oh, uh, really? And uh, my buddy, uh, Jeremy Hoffman and Louis Hurtado and I, we uh, went out and completely pranked the Lost Community and had videos on the site, and then we revealed an island, and there was a login and password, and... Oh, oh yeah. you? All BS, so... Okay, you're for, welcome, Lost. For someone... <laughs> so over the show. I can't believe you put all that effort into it. That's, that's, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you know what? I think we should rate some gadget prompts. Oh yeah, it's a portable hard drive rapid fire rodeo! <laughs> Shows off the rails. <laughs> it's awesome. Lost ends and we lose our minds. Yeah. That's what happens. All right, so our first hard drive is the uh, 320 gigabit uh, verbatim mm -hmm. Insight. Uh, the unique thing about the Insight is the always on LCD that tells you how much space is mm. left on the drive. Yeah. Yeah, I like it's it. on right it's now. Pretty. It's advertised. How useful is it actually? Uh, it's really useful because yeah. I mean, normally you look at a hard drive, let's say like this. I'm going to use my thumb to demonstrate. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at this hard drive right now, Allison, and we'll yes, wait till you can see me on air. Uh, we're waiting. There we I go. don't know how much space is left in this drive. You tell me. You tell me. Uh, I am at a loss, no. Allison. I don't know. I can't answer your question. Now I can. Oh. Oh. I can tell you that there are 296 gigs free on this drive thanks to that little miracle window. Uh, it doesn't have fantastic. to be connected to a computer to see it. You can personalize the name of the hard drive, which is great, so people I will, will know mine Kevin. exactly whose drive they're stealing. There yes, there you go. So Kevin's uh, pretty empty. <laughs> it's also the, uh, the lightest and thinnest drive in our roundup, so there you go. All right, so how did it test in speed? Uh, it was the slowest, but not by much. Overall, it's a good buy. It's 75 bucks. Oh, it's got a little nice. LCD on it. All right. Yeah, there you go. So our second is the 250 gig uh, Seagate replica. Yep. Now, they say this drive becomes a clone of your computer's hard drive within just a few clicks. So is it, is it actually that easy? Is it's it... really easy. Really? Um, you connect the drive. You install the software. It will immediately start backing up. Um, the software does only work with Windows, but the drive Ew. itself is compatible with the Mac. So you can still do Yay. it. And it looks like a shiny metal pita. It does. I kind of want to eat it. Did you want to just nom it? There you go. Uh, it feels <laughs> not edible. actually heard that. Wow. Not edible. Um, it feels more like a desktop hard drive, but um, you know, it's still it's portable enough. And it's flashy. Yeah. So what about the speed? 
Uh, it was the fastest uh, by one second, really? which still makes it the it's fastest. So, it's probably because it's aerodynamic. Yeah, exactly. You see? Paint a racing stripe on it. You'll it's back up even quicker. It's very aerodynamic. We think it's a great buy at 60 bucks. You can't go wrong. You know, that wind just blows right In case of you're it. computing in a wind tunnel, this is Done. the hard drive for you. Done. Yeah. All right, our third is the uh, 640 gig Toshiba like portable hard done. drive. Done. Look at my doves. <laughs> I've released them. <laughs> All right, this is 640 gig, so it has a very large capacity. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it doesn't have very many features. Um, although, as you pointed out, it kind of looks like a Coke can. Looks like a Coke can. There's a feature. So is it fast enough? Yes, it is fast enough. It's uh, just as fast as the rest of the drives. It's a little pricey at 90 bucks, so this one's sort of mm. up to the buyer. If you like the aesthetic, but go for it. It's prettier looking. It is, it is very pretty, yeah. When I first saw it, I thought it looked just like a coaster. Yeah, they, well, a coaster that holds 640 gigs and your beverage. So that's fantastic. Uh, it's pretty, pretty good. They should make those. But I right. like this last one. I like Our this last one. Our final drive. It's the 500 gigabyte Western Digital My Passport Studio. Mm -hmm. It has it's FireWire 400 and 800 connections. It is. Um, it also has a USB. It includes a capacity gauge. So what are you? I'm just trying to hold it still. <laughs> I'm just trying camera. to hold it still, so I'm just shaking. You. All right. So is this worth the extra money? Totally. Uh, the capacity yes. meter slides over the ports, uh, so they don't get dust in them. Uh, the FireWire connection is up to two and a half times as fast as USB, which Yay. is very, very important. Uh, the, the drive itself is a little on the heavier side, but it's easy enough to carry around. You can slip it in your pocket, uh, put it in your laptop bag. Um, you know, knowing that you only have one LED of space left isn't as accurate as having an LCD screen that <laughs> tells you, you precisely what's left. Yeah. Like, oh, I got two lights left. Sweet. That's good. I don't know. That's, that's not enough for hentai. I know. But um, overall, it's better than not having any indication. All right, so what were the speed test results? Good? Uh, right in the middle. Still, right as, the middle. Uh, still as fast as all the drives. Look, the drives were all within four seconds apart. So uh -oh. speed really isn't a huge issue here. I'd say this one's it probably your be. best bet, though. If it, you're in a race, that one second could matter. It could be the difference between life and not backing up a phone photo of your daughter's birthday party it's in time. I don't know whatever you're, you're doing. But this one's only 100 bucks. Again, it's got the, the fire wire and it's 500 gigs. So we think this is probably your best bet. There you go. All right, that's it for today's Gadget Prom. But if you have a gadget... Easy on the portable hard drive excitement, guys. <laughs> I know. I'm it sorry, very, Allison. It was, you know what it was? It was a rapid fire. It was rapid Their fire. Their mind was blown so quickly they we did not know how animals. to react. We killed some animals. I mean, when you talk about okay. data storage, that's one thing. When you talk about data storage that's portable, they get all riled up. They get all antsy. Yes! All antsy in their pantsy. We can't have that. All right, so if you have a gadget you would like to see us rate, email us at gadgetpron at g4tv.com. But still ahead, loss is over. But what the hell exactly happened? We don't really know. The loop conducts a post-mortem on the show where the only sure thing is that everybody's dead. Yep, we got that. sure? In Sideways World. And we'll learn about the spy life with Chuck's Joshua Gomez. He will be here live, and I will ask him questions, and he will give me answers. I'm like the island. All over the world, people are laying their fingers on other people's Butterfingers. But fear not, the Butterfinger Defense League has got your back. They're looking for the fourth member of their team, and it could be you. You could even win 20000 bucks, plus a trip to Comic-Con to meet Olivia and myself. It's better than that. Go to g4tv.com slash Butterfinger Defense League to learn how you can join the fight. So I was just trying to get in my corner, like, baby, we're live. <laughs> it's time for the news. I'm over here. Hey. I'm always here, though. There's a T for me to stand on. Yay! Yay. T is for terrific, because you are. Let's start the feed. <laughs> it's Monday, May 24th, and here are your top stories. First off, Facebook is now at least pretending to care about your privacy. Hey. In a Washington Post op-ed, CEO Mark Zuckerberg admitted that when it comes to privacy issues, he and the company made a bunch of mistakes, you think? Including when Facebook started giving third-party services automatic access to your information. Zuckerberg promises that the site will soon roll out simplified privacy controls, as well as an easy way to opt out of all third-party services. However, he didn't apologize for the mishandling of privacy issues or for that annoying friend of yours who keeps tagging you in drunk photos. Yeah. Jeff, I'm looking at you. Stop getting drunk. No, why would I have that? That is a very bad solution to that problem. Touché. Touché. <laughs> 
at your calendar and draw a big happy face on September 14th because that's when Halo Reach launches worldwide. According to the Associated Press, 2.7 million people played the Reach beta, meaning that it looks likely to dominate gamer attention spans this fall. But Reach will be the last Halo project from Bungie Studios, which created the franchise. Future installments will be developed in-house at Microsoft. Meanwhile, Bungie will move on to developing a new series for Activision, so don't shed too many tears from them. They're doing all right. And finally, if you want to build up your arsenal for ma Mafia war Wars, Mafia Wars, I speak, look no further than 7-Eleven. Huh? Venture Beat reports that on June 1st, nearly 7,000 of the convenience stores will sell virtual goods for the 239 million people currently playing Zynag's, uh, or Zynga, Zynga's? Is that, is that who does it? Zynga. Thanks. There's no vowels in that name, sorry. <laughs> uh, they have lots of games. Uh, so while you're getting your daily Slurpee fix, you'll also be able to buy specially marked products that will give you limited edition stuff to use with your Farmville Farms, your Mafia Wars Cruise, or your creepy Yoville mini -Mies. They're so creepy. <laughs> I'm Allison Hayslip, and you've just been fed. Now we will go to Kevin and see what he has to say. What Thank you, you Allison Hayslip, for the hey, news. Welcome, That's what I say. I also say, if you have sex questions, Drunkle Ted is not going to be much help. But luckily, <laughs> we have Anna David on speed dial. Here we go. <laughs> I'm Anna David, and I'm here in San Diego. With millions out there getting it on, there's some pretty racy questions that need to be answered. So I'm hitting the streets of the gas lamp district to see if I can clear up the issues in your pants. So I was wondering what this sexting is all about. You know, it's like texting, but about sex, right? There's like studies that have been done that have said that roughly 40% of teens and young people are doing that. But studies also show that 40% are showing their sex to other people, which means that something you send to her, she's maybe showing all of her friends. So I think it's something you do with caution. You don't want to end up on YouTube. That is not the goal of sexting. Is there any over-the-counter ways I can improve my stamina? Okay. There are none that I can recommend, but there are a lot of not necessarily over-the-counter ways. I'm talking mental ways. Now, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this little technique where you go home and you try on your own and you get right before that point and you stop and then you do it again and you get right before that point and you stop. Practice makes perfect. Exactly, my point. Another thing to keep in mind, and guys do not seem to know this, most girls, they don't really want to go all night. Sometimes that makes it so we can't walk the next day. We don't want that. That usually happens. <laughs> well, you know, I'm gonna have to trust you on that one. And there's always the tried and true picture, you know, your grandmother, count baseball, whatever you need to do. I think of my grandmother mowing the lawn. Okay. <laughs> that should work. In fact, viewers, you can borrow his grandmother mowing the lawn if you want to last longer. I have like really, really freaky deaky sex with my girl, right? Right. Most of the times when we're done, she gets really dizzy and disoriented and she gets all hyper. Really? You're really? <laughs> and I just like I have to calm her down. Does that something that I have that I should worry about? That she just doesn't know how to relax after sex? Well it could be, <laughs> I mean you could be like that good. It could be that, but there's a couple of other possibilities. Some women, they're concentrating so hard on like getting to that point that they literally hold their breath. Okay. So it could be something like that where she's literally not breathing right. Or it could be something psychological, like sex is somehow like nauseating or she's having some flashback. I mean, that's the only like way you should worry, but I think right. if it continues to happen and she's seriously dizzy, she should go to an ear, nose, and throat doctor and see if there's like a vertigo thing. We want her to be like healthy and good so you can continue to have this amazing sex with her, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Just doing my part to help out the folks in San Diego. I'm Anna David. See you next time I go in your pants. Kate. You have to do the loop. <laughs> Something happened with that TV show Lost. Joining us to help make sense of it all, editor and columnist for HitFix.com, Drew McQueen is here. Yeah. And senior editor for Chud.com, Devin Faraci joins us. Welcome back to the loop, gentlemen. Excellent hero pose. Next time, just Captain Morgan edit if you have to. Just get the foot on the desk. Um, all right, so...
Uh, everybody, of course, talking about the finale. Uh, the general consensus is that after Desmond pulled the plug on the island, the big rock cork out of the, the ground, uh, that's Jack killed the smoke monster. We learned that the Flash sideways are really some sort of purgatory, and they're all reuniting in the afterlife. Spoilers. Um, <laughs> is that what you guys got out of it? I mean, is that is that is that a general consensus? Is everybody okay with that? Like the the the, the, the Flash sideways, that's purgatory. Yes, uh, post show, post island stuff. It's what happened to them after the island and after the events that we saw right. during the season. You agree, Devin? I think that's pretty much it. It's did, when. But did the island actually happen? The yes. island actually happened. The purgatory stuff is what happens to them. The people who made it off the island go off the island, have happy lives, die, and then go meet their friends from the island in purgatory heaven. Thing. Right. But, yeah, this, uh, everything did happen. I, I think uh, everything that happened on the island was real over the course of the show. Because maybe I'm listening to the wrong crazies at the office, but somebody was shouting all day that this was a dream in Jack's head. That. No. That this was no. that Jack died when the plane went down, and this was all his journey to make it to that afterlife. No, it's no. not Jacob's Ladder. It's not a current right. Owl Creek Bridge. It's not that. It's they, and I think a lot of people theorize that even in the first year. Mm -hmm. um, the this last season was a little bit of that, but only for post show. Yeah, I think that the the, the, the ending was terrible in its own way, yeah. and not like those <laughs> other gonna, things. We're gonna get to opinions of it, but <laughs> but I mean, it, the, the the correct me if I'm wrong. Lost. It, it begins with Jack's eyes opening, and yep. then it ends with them closing. Perfect metaphor for the oh, he's beginning his journey, and now he's dead. No, it's all in his head, right? No, I think that's just I think that's just to tie it together visually, not not to say thematically that we're we're seeing somebody's. Soul journey through the afterlife. Are you telling me Double X Lost Fan 27 Double X on the message board that I go to got it wrong? I, I'm telling you, he may have. He's going to be very upset to hear that. He's be very upset. <laughs> uh, a lot of critics have slammed the flash sideways as sort of being unnecessary. They said that they didn't have to go there. They did, though. Do you, do you guys think they were needed? No, I thought it was awful. I thought that it was uh, it was fan service, but the worst kind of fan service because it was all about setting up a reality where Jack and Kate don't just end up together; they end up together forever in heaven, and with like the little Hummel figurines and like you know, <laughs> it's just it's ridiculous. It's it's this it's this sappy schmaltzy garbage that I don't think really reflects what the show is about. Well, I think, but I, I would argue that the show has always been about these people that were from the very first time we met them at the beginning of the first episode troubled, and each one of them. Mm -hmm had like profound troubles that the flashbacks revealed and the flash forwards revealed and you know that's always been part and parcel with the show so the idea of creating something a device which you could go through the hardships on the island kill characters you needed to kill but still give everybody a resolution that ultimately reunited people and gave them all their constants uh, something that had been introduced earlier I think I think is fitting I don't know that I buy the mechanism by which they did it right but I understand why they did it and I think the emotional payoffs worked Drew is it then fair to say that you enjoyed the finale you're fine with the way I, I think everything played like gangbusters for right. the last five minutes and then I think the last five minutes were the sticking point for a lot of people right. and understandably and Devin you artfully used 140 characters at a time on Twitter to show people exactly how much you hated the finale <laughs> yes right so so wh where's the disconnect here well I think that the first two hours like, like, like drew were, were fine I mean I'm Season six really sort of beat me down in a lot of ways, and like I knew they weren't going to answer any of the questions about the island. I got it. I just wanted to see a basic resolution. It was when it all turned into Highway to Heaven at the very end that I was like, "Oh, give me a break!" Right. I'm like, you know, like you know, as if Michael Landon's going to come out, maybe I'll, I'll be okay with it. If they're going to wake up next to Bob Newhart, maybe I'll be okay with it. If they rock the circle or something, or but it's just it's just ridiculous sappiness, and I think that you know. The redemption aspect of the show was important, and mm -hmm. there is a redemption, but the redemption has to come in your life. And I think giving redemption in like some kind of purgatory heaven thing is meaningless. It's just a do-over. It's video game theology. Hit X to start over. Well, you, you touched on something really quick that, that bothered me, and, and, and you did as well, Drew, because you said that at, you know the, the show has sort of always been about these people that are, that are struggling and they're troubled characters and whatnot. But for me, the show was always about this island. Um, I kind of cared about this place that they were at, and it seemed like they were trying to explain the, the, the sci-fi elements of the show through grounded science, which the nerd in me really appreciated, and I felt like they sort of let that all go by the wayside, that none of those questions were answered. D didn't they deserve to answer some of those? I think they took a hard left turn. I think, I think they made a decision about which show they were making, and the decision they made wasn't the decision that would have made you happy as a sci-fi fan. And who do I we blame, MapQuest? Uh, who gave them, yes. who told them to take that turn? Because uh, they started off very entrenched in the science, and when, when did they lose? When did they? 
I, when did I, Jesus take the wheel and steer the show in a direction that I didn't like? I think it's very reactive. I think what they looked at was the way the audience was responding over the years. And yes, there were always questions about the sci-fi elements. And there were always people that got excited about them and set up websites to explore like Dharma initiative sure. stuff. And those, those existed. But I think what ultimately a lot of people got really crazy about and where the most passion was concentrated was on the character relationships. So I think they made the choice at some point when they were getting ready for the end game. That's what we're going to write about. It's not going to be the sci-fi show. I literally don't believe that, though. I think the thing is that the show is half character, half island mystery. And I think that by shorting the island mystery, you've shorted the entire series, I think. Mm -hmm. it's, the, re the characters are great, but, you know, the real backdrop of Lost is this mysterious island with monsters and people shooting machine guns at you and hatches and temples and stuff like that. And to say at the end, well, that wasn't really that important after all. These people were good friends. Like, what, really? That's honestly the yeah. thing? It's well, like, I, you know... I think that's that's how a, a large portion of the audience feels. But but with that said, there's definitely a portion of the audience that, that didn't care. They wanted the relationships. But there is still that, 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 that clingy community forum that believes this isn't the end. There's going to be a movie. There's going to be a spinoff miniseries, a cartoon, a serial. Um, what do you guys think? Is, is Lost really done? There's, it's, in, it's impossible that ABC has finished making money with Lost. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. it's liter there's no way they're going to leave money on the table. So what form do you think that takes? Oh, Real quick. It's a sitcom. It's Hurley and Ben. They're running, they're running the island <laughs> office. It's sort of a workplace comedy. Single camera it's drama. Like, it's like Fantasy Island meets The Office is and what then it it's, is. And then it's the, <laughs> then it's the one hour drama spinoff, which is Sawyer and Miles as cops in L.A., which I think would also work. Uh, so. and deal or no deal in the Smoke Monsters, the banker. Are we going to yep. get to that point as well? There you go. I can't wait. I think we just made three new shows for ABC. Congratulations, guys. Excellent. Uh, thanks to Drew McWeeny from HitFix and Devin Faraci from Chud.com. We appreciate your passion. Thanks for keeping us in the loop. But now, for the diehard Lost fans, yes, the end is bittersweet, but for those who aren't ready to say goodbye to the island, don't worry. There's help. <laughs> oh, hold on. Are you a lost fan who needs to get some stuff off your chest? And I thought that when the island sank, that was actually the descent oh. of man, but... Or are you a friend of a lost fan who just won't shut up about it? You know, because the light at the center of the island, given what the old woman said, okay, is really the... Hi, welcome to Lost Chat. What theories would you like to discuss? Well, like I was saying, okay, the light at the center of the island. That's why there's Lost Chat. Lost Chat is the number one meeting place for Lost fans who want to discuss the unending minutia of the show but don't know how to use internet message boards. For just $5 a minute, devotees can connect with hundreds of other Losties to talk about the island's mysteries, unanswered questions, the Dharma Initiative's true motives, and their preferred length of Sawyer's hair. Don't be stupid, they totally explain the numbers. If you had played the ARG during the season two hiatus. See, I think that the reason women couldn't give birth on the island after the incident has everything to do with electromagnets. Who cares why there were polar bears? Polar bears are awesome. Isn't that enough? So lost fans, save your marriage, avoid bar fights, and instead share your love of the show with the ones who really appreciate it. Because we all know Glee doesn't have enough monsters for you. Call us today. <laughs> Lost Chat is not affiliated with ABC, Lost, or its producers in any way. Lost Chat is for adults with large credit card limits only. Lost Chat has no answers to the show's mysteries, and in fact, actively rejects the idea that answers ever existed to begin with. People on Lost Chat may be just as dumb as you. You'll be kicked out of Lost Chat if you ask about Walt. The feed is brought to you by eHarmony.com. Are you ready to fall in love? <laughs> Chuck airs tonight. Joining me now, the star himself, Joshua Gomez. Hey! Hi, sir. How are you? I'm good. Uh, really quickly, your finale is going to tell us what the island right. truly is, right? It is absolutely. So, so right. make sure you tune in for that. That's the big thing that we do, right? Um, right. You guys, you wrapped a little while ago on this, yeah. Season, right? So you've uh, had March. some downtime. Yeah. Yeah. What are you? What are, are you gaming with the downtime? That's all I do. Really? That's all I do. Yeah. It's um, it's a shame. Is but, it like uh, a, a, a quick trip for some Hun Cal Froyo and then back to gaming? Yeah, or if, if that, if that, you know, it's, uh, it's just mostly delivery, you know? Really? Uh, Are you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, because yeah, yeah. Like, we were chatting in the, in the green room before the show, like, you're, you're legit. You're serious yeah. about your games, which yeah. I love. So yeah. you just blasted through Alan Wake. Did, which was, I thought was fantastic. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I was, yeah. Alan Wake fans here? Yeah. That's it. Nice. I love the Alan Wake. Yeah, it was, um, I, I was 
huge Max Payne fan. So I was yeah, really into Remedy, and I was excited. And I, But I was like, okay, didn't have huge expectations. It was not Max Payne 3, so I was like, okay, see what they got here. And then... Um, I happened to see like a behind the doors demo of it at E3, which mm -hmm. kind of got me psyched. And then was that 12 years ago when they first yeah, announced right, the game? The first, right, yeah, right. I was like 14, and I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. right. I was going through puberty. I said, man, one yeah, of these days, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get that facial hair and I'm gonna beat that game. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly right. I love that you know. I'm sorry, I just love that you you you, you shouted out the developer remedy. Yeah. most people but are like, yeah, no, right. I'm a huge right. gamer. I right. love Nintendo, uh, no, and it's I, like you know they go like, I love the the, the bleeps with the yeah, Xboxes. Right, and, right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Isn't that Mario? When did you get into gaming? Um, was that been a lifelong thing? Yeah, my yeah. yeah my, my dad came home with a, a 2600, an Atari 2600, nice. and uh, from then on, man, it was like Coleco and television. Every every system, it was it was. So did I you actually have up. a cool dad that was giving you video games, or did you have a nerd dad that was into video games? Nerd dad that was into video awesome. games. So, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 he was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go nerd dad. <laughs> um, he's also the one who pushed us, like me and my brother into like um, into acting and stuff like that. So he was funny. He's like instead of the football dad, he was like the video game and, right. and movie dad. Look, make uh, movies. Yeah, come here, son. Take a knee. Yeah. All right. <laughs> This yeah. is what you're going to do. I'll be proud of you, whatever you want to do. I wish it was right. thespian. Right. You can just right. get out there. Right. 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 Work those lines. Look at your brother's more of the dramatic guy. We got that. Go comedy. Go comedy. I think there's a big open market mm -hmm. there. All right. Yeah. But, uh, I no, thought my yeah, boy yeah, would yeah. be doing rom-coms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Turns out he's a mixed martial artist. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. Still proud of him. Yeah. You know? <laughs> just, uh, no judgments. Hope he doesn't get the tiara knocked off his head. <laughs> um, <laughs> you played Mass Effect 2 as well, right? That, which and, is, that, and you know what's for That is probably, right now, is still my game of the year. You think so? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, look at you guys just agree. Oh, yeah. uh, as so is. <laughs> welcome no, to your church, yeah. by the yeah, way. You're yeah, welcome. Right, right. <laughs> Preach on. Uh, um, but did you, like it? did you enjoy that game? I did enjoy it, but I did not enjoy uh, Yvonne. Your no, co-host, well, your, no. your, your co-star, Ivan Strahovski, no. is in it. Mm -hmm. uh, Miranda. Miranda, sure. Hard to get. To I, say I couldn't get her. I couldn't get her either. Really? Yeah. You tried, though, though, right? I'd go to work, and I'd be like, what is your problem? <laughs> like, you're, that's one thing to treat me like this in real life. <laughs> but, like, when I try to bed you in the virtual world, please. <laughs> you got it. All right? That's, <laughs> there's got to be limits here. All right? Um, did, you, did you talk to her about I that talked at to all? Her, like, I, yeah, she was like, oh, really? I don't, you know, she's like, uh, no way, did you try to sleep with me? I'm like, yes, I tried, you know, I'm like, I'm like yes, I re repeatedly. Low checkpoint, what the f***? You know what I mean? It was like, uh, I took her to the engine bay, yeah, I showed yeah. her my fish, yeah, yeah, nothing yeah. happens right. in that game. So then, of course, I just went and I banged the alien, which is oh, what I normally go, yeah. do, which is what I, you know what I mean? You know what? No alien says no to me! Yeah. That's what's most telling about yeah. that. That game reveals the true being of men because it's like, listen, Miranda's the hottest one. Sure. Clearly, I want her. Sure. I'll do the chick who checks my email, yeah. or I'll bang the alien. Yeah. That's fine. Whatever. Yeah. As long yeah, as I'm yeah, getting yeah. laid Absolutely. on some solar system. Absolutely. I love it. Oh, yep. we, we, we have a minute left, so oh. let me ask you about Chuck. Um, what is going on with your character? What's your character getting into oh, with this? Man. Well, it's been a, uh, wow, it's been a journey. No, the, know. the finale um, is going to be uh, a bigger deal. You guys have an extended time slot. It's two, gonna hours? Be two, two hours? Two hours, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and it's, it's pretty cool, actually. You know, right now, Chuck is, uh, the, the Intersect 2.0 is um, giving him all sorts of problems. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, his, his Scott Bakula plays his father and sort of the creator of the Intersect um, is there and trying to help him fix this problem because it could lead to eventually death or whatever if, he does, if it's not fixed. Is something blowing up? I saw a promo and it looked like and something then, blowing and up. And then the Bymore looks like it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't do too well. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. well. We'll all be tuning into Kimmel for the alternate endings. Yes, yes. So, Joshua, absolute pleasure to meet there. you. Come back you anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you guys, the, the season finale of Chuck airs tonight on NBC. All right, stop. No, seriously, stop. It's Allison time. Whoa. I feel like... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Is that kind of the MC Hammer dance? Whatever. I don't know um, what your dead arms were doing. <laughs> I don't know what they were doing either. You're dancing like a flat Stanley. <laughs> doing the robot. I'm always good at the robot. All right, today's epic fail approach is save yourselves or embrace your doom and stick around. Yay! But first, the Butterfinger Defense League is recruiting, and they don't care about your drug history. A crime wave of epic proportions is sweeping the country. Good citizens everywhere live in fear of debased criminals laying a finger on their precious butterfingers. If you are the victim of this devastating loss, there's only one place to turn. The Butterfinger Defense League. They are Eric Sex Strutter, Lou Strongman Ferrigno, and Charisma Sassy Carpenter. When all hope is lost, they make life delicious again. But we are looking for someone to be the fourth member of the League. 
and it could be you. Rule number one. Tell us why you'd be a valuable addition to the Butterfinger Defense League. Show us your own unique ability that makes you a perfect candidate to protect Butterfingers across the globe. I'd make a great fourth member because I was raised by coyotes in the Angeles National Forest and I can track a Butterfinger up to three miles away. Plus, I invented Butterfinger nunchucks. Rule number two. Videos must be no longer than 60 seconds. Well, it's perfect, except it's 65 seconds long. Why is it 65 seconds long? Rule number three. Remember to include a Butterfinger and the line, nobody's gonna lay a finger on my Butterfinger. You must say it exactly like that. Nobody better finger my butter. Cut, cut, that is so very wrong. Run it again, take 42. All submissions will be judged by G4 on the criteria of creativity, technical merit, and the best use of Butterfinger. The field will be narrowed to two finalists, and both will be transported to the 2010 San Diego Comic-Con and appear on the G4 stage with Kevin and me. The grand prize winner will be announced live and initiated as the fourth member of the Butterfinger Defense League. Plus, they'll walk home with a $20,000 prize. Go to g4tv.com slash Butterfinger Defense League for more info. Good luck. Coming up tomorrow on an all-new AOTS, Allison heads to Abbey Road to meet the stars of Get Em to the Greek, Russell Brand, and Jonah Hill. Plus, it's TV Tuesday with Chris Gore. He's got reviews of Alice in Wonderland, The Road, and True Blood Season 2. It's the same island, different job. Daniel Day Kim will be here live to talk about leaving Lost for Hawaii 5 -0. See it tomorrow. Like the elderly are worthless. Oof. They are. Wow. But some what things, you, you know, some old. old things like statues, they're actually worth money. They're old. <laughs> and the best thing is that thing was in Europe, so it's like it's probably like a like a billion years old or whatever. Or like a billion and two. <laughs> Fail. Uh, thank you, time everybody. If you don't mind, I want to hand one out to Miss Allison Hayes. I also want to thank Dr. Drew sure. McQueenie and Devin Ferracci, and of course, big thanks to Joshua Gomez for coming on the chat video game. Between you two. Bit of a budding bromance. Whatever. I mean, we're going to go right. shop for skinny jeans together. I have two words about loss. Uh, international Sex Lady starts right now. Go. What? Lapidus lives!